The Wii U and 3DS combo was such a special generation for Nintendo. Sure, sales-wise, they both fell short of their previous iterations. I almost forgot the 3DS only sold, like, half of the original DS. That's crazy. I thought it did way better, but, uh, nope. And some of their business decisions at the time, uh, not, not so great either. Remember the Nintendo Creator Program? I try not to. But the amount of quality software on both, especially first party, was top-notch, uh, for the most part. I think we've all come to accept that. The menus had so much charm to them, amiibo were popping off like crazy. Remember that one guy who, like, hate-bought every single Rosalina amiibo just for a funny little post online? What the hell was that all about? The directs during this time were just oozing with, uh, they, they were oozing with something, all right. Some illegal substance, I'm sure. The Switch is undoubtedly more successful in every single way, but if you were a Nintendo fan from 2011 to 2016, you, uh, you certainly have a lot to tell your therapist, I'm sure. The charm of this era of Nintendo isn't some crazy hot take, you know? We've all come to accept it. Especially with the eShops now closed. Dude, that nostalgia cycle is in full effect. People are finding their childhood 3DSs in their closet. They're playing a bunch of classics as well as finding hidden gems. Always a fan of that. But then the resale market, that too, uh... Oh god, these prices. At least I have you. I'll never let you go. Until you're like $10,000 on eBay, then yeah, then, then you're gone. Man, like, the prices of some of these games going forward is gonna be absolutely insane. If you don't have a physical collection by now and you want one in the future, I... Oh man, I pity your wallet. You have a crazy uphill battle that you're going towards now. If you, if you go for it, sure, but I wouldn't really recommend it. I think your money is probably better off spent somewhere else, like, uh... Oh! With the sponsor of today's video, bye! You like that? Uh, that was, that was pretty smooth. It's ad read time. If you ever found yourself interested in importing some good old video games, then you may have noticed that some of the prices for these games are a little bit outlandish. There just has to be a cheaper way. Well, Bai is the solution for you. This is a big old aggregate of different websites where you can import Japanese goods. Websites like Mercari, Rakuten, Amazon Japan, Yahoo Japan, both the shopping and auction edition. All of that can be found on one place on the Bai website to make this a great one-stop shop for all your imports. All you do is you settle on the item that you want, you order it, and Bai will buy the items for you, and then they will prepare it for international shipping, no matter where in the world you're located. And what, are you worried that your Japanese game won't play on your American console? There are ways around this, you already know. Look at this kid. You know you want to buy this. There's such a charm to importing video games, especially retro ones, and Bai is making it incredibly easy to get started. If you click the link in the description below and create a brand new account, you will get a 2,000 yen coupon on your very first purchase. That is a crazy value that is free money that you get to play with just like that. Like I said before, this is definitely a better way to spend your money. So thank you to Bai for sponsoring today's video, and now, back to things that uh, weren't a great way to spend your money. Going through the eShops one final time for both the 3DS and Wii U really brought back some nostalgic memories. I used to frequent these shops so much while these consoles were active. I mean, they both had actual theme songs for the shopping experience. I couldn't help myself. It's a lot more welcoming than... Hooray, capitalism, yahoo, let's go! The 3DS was such a haven for indies and virtual console games, I never wanted to miss anything when they were dropping. Every single game had a unique banner with some screenshots, sometimes a trailer if you were lucky, and hey, maybe you'd find a classic gem that you missed out on from generations gone by. Like uh, this one here, Lufia the Legend Returns. Let's uh, let's see here, every game has three screenshots to try and sell the game, let's, let's see what we got here. She's all right, she just inhaled too much smoke. Oh, finally, the perfect game for me. Plus, it's thanks to this console that I got to watch Dinosaur Office, and that was pretty peak, let's be real. Dinosaur Office! Brah! The Wii U, by comparison, obviously had a much smaller library, but I would argue that this eShop was a lot more fun to explore, and made it all that much better whenever something good did show up. Listen, okay, in no universe is Mario vs. Donkey Kong Tipping Stars a super exciting release, but there was nothing else around it at the time, and hey, look at that. It has graphics, I'll buy it, sure. There was also this one time for E3 where Nintendo released a bunch of demos for indie games that were released at the time, like, no big deal in retrospect, but this is how I first played Freedom Planet all those years ago, so I'll always be nostalgic for that, that was a pretty cool program. I'm pretty sure that a lot less heavy hitter proper Wii U games is what pushed Nintendo to keep doing the Virtual Console on that system for a little while longer, but hey man, seeing GBA, DS, and even Wii games on there was pretty damn cool. Dude, they got Pocky and Rocky with Becky on this? Dude. Oh, man, us Wii U fans were really starving, okay? 
Man, you remember how, like, you could search for 3DS games on the Wii U eShop and not purchase them? What the... God, what, what the hell was this company doing? Remember how stupid Wii Sports Club was handled? Sure, nowadays with a physical copy, it is very easy to get a full complete game out of this and when you do, you got a somewhat decent HD remaster of the original Wii Sports. It's fine. Whatever. It's a dumb call after Wii Sports Resort expanded on that idea greatly and it was actually a great minigame collection instead of just a bare bones 5 minigame sport pack, but hey, whatever, it is what it is, I'm not mad about it. Club included online play. Not like you'd really know about it because who was playing Wii Sports Club in the 2010s online, but hey, it was there. The thing is though, when the game first dropped, there was no physical edition and only two of the sports were available digitally and individually. They would cost you about $10 each for a single pass that you can access the game whenever you want going forward, but you could also like, rent the game for a day for, for $2? Huh? It really took a disgusting amount of time for Nintendo to figure out this whole digital distribution thing, and it's a shame that a Wii Sports sequel was essentially sacrificed along the way. Good to know Nintendo has since learned their lesson, it wouldn't do anything stupid like this again. Oh. Aw, oh, damn it. Now I could sit here and do the whole, ah, oh, these are the hidden gems that you should have picked up when you had the chance. I could have done that whole thing, but you've seen that a bunch by now. I'm not gonna do that. If you know me at all, you know that I am way more interested in the games that Nintendo even dared to allow on their eShops in the first place, because... Oh, oh man. Listen, first and foremost, not to belittle the difficulties of game development, I'm not trying to trying to make that whole thing seem like a big old joke, and if any developers out there are watching this, I'm uh, sorry to put you on blast, but... You, you know, some of this, you, you kind of did it to yourself. Besides, it's not like I'm affecting sales anyway. Yell at Nintendo for closing the eShops, not me, I'm not affecting nothing, you can't buy these games now anyway. And also, let's continue to be real, these games aren't really gone if you try hard enough. Listen, it's surprisingly easy to mod a Nintendo 3DS, that's all I'm saying. The act of supporting games that are readily available by purchasing them is something I am totally in favor of, I was doing it all the time, I continue to do so, it's my favorite way to support the developers putting out games that I want to play. But that being said, PDI check was $100. What the f- Oh, uh, come on, that's not even the right console. PDI check, in collaboration with the Alaska Children's Eye and... Stra uh, strabis strabismus. Happy holidays, everybody. Merry strabismus. This is the title screen. Okay. I thought like the graphics were still loading here, but uh, nope. This is this is it. Start. Uh, click the one that's different. I guess uh, success. Okay. W what? Okay, maybe I just have to do a different challenge. Um. I, okay, okay, the test wins. I genuinely can't tell what the difference is here. Try again. What? What am I supposed to do? Which color is different? I, you know what? I think Alaska wins. I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna succeed Alaska's test, I'm sorry. Eventually, I just had to keep clicking on random things so I could succeed on all of the tests and see what's happening at the end. And hey, look at that. Nothing. $100? I'm not saying that video game software can't double as a genuine tool, I am a big fan of Brain Age and the DS in general had loads of software like this, so as a tool meant for a doctor's office to provide something for multiple children to use, $100, theoretically, is more than a reasonable price. But why is this on the 3DS eShop for personal use? None of you out there bought it. Unless you have a weird morbid curiosity and $100 to spare, you did not buy this, and if you did, you are lying, I don't trust you. My guy, over there at PDI Check, you have a website. This could have been handled with basic HTML. Maybe you should have tried again when you had the chance. This is... This is a sin. The 3DS was this odd stretch of time where industry analysts, who always know what they're talking about, kept claiming that the rise of mobile gaming was going to be killing the entire dedicated handheld gaming space. And I mean, over 10 years on, they weren't entirely wrong, but still! For the few years that Nintendo tried proving them wrong with their top-tier retail games, they certainly put out some questionable digital ones at the same time! I got it, I got the perfect solution to fix declining sales. Nintendo says, filled with excitement and joy, Kersploosh! It's called Kersploosh. Ker... Ker... Kersploosh. In Kersploosh, you are a rock and you fall down a hole. That's it! Oh, sorry, you're not always a rock, sometimes you're a bouncy ball. Sometimes you're a Matryoshka doll. Sometimes you're a water drop. Don't be the water drop. They all play slightly differently, with different handling and health amounts, and it's all about getting to the bottom of the well as fast as you can. 
and it's a completely dreadful experience. It is so hard to see where you're going, and then they start throwing in these fake donuts made of metal while encouraging you to go through the real donuts. Just pray to God you actually don't bounce off of them. Did they pick donuts because they were just so quirky and funny? Haha, <laughs> this it's so quirky and original. 20 minutes later and I did all the stupid stages and I'm done. Cool. This got a spot in a Nintendo Direct. Man, times were, God, times were different. Thankfully though, unlike PDI Check, that one was pretty cheap, so whatever, I guess. But for the most part, any of the cheap games that you found on the eShop really felt like a lot of low quality garbage that you would see on phones nowadays. Azure Snake. It's Snake. You know, in case you want to bring your 3DS into match class instead of your TI-82 calculator. Angry Bunnies, a terrible Angry Birds clone on a console that already has Angry Birds on it. But if you were someone that just really liked the concept of Angry Birds and just couldn't stand birds and wanted to throw around mammals instead, and you preferred awful controls, you know what, maybe this game is for you. But if that is you, I deeply apologize. There was even a more expensive version on the Wii U if you were feeling especially feisty with your wallet that day. It's the same game, but it looks better. Cool. Oh, and uh, hey, speaking of birds, Bird Mania 3D. One of those uh, endless flyer and get as many points as possible type of games. You know you, you know what this is like. One of those uh, you play the game for 60 milliseconds and you've experienced the entire thing kind of games, you know? It's, it's, it's one of those, but there is a story. Birds are flying south for the winter and Mojo, your name is Mojo by the way, overslept. Doy, idiot. And now you have to catch up with everybody on your way to Africa because that's what birds do. All right, Mojo, let's go. He's dead now. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I, I guess the game is fine, but it's just missing a theme. Like, I just wish... I just wish there was some sort of cohesive theme that tied everything together that made me feel jolly. Like, maybe if it was Christmas-themed... Oh my god. Dude, let's go! Birds are flying south for the, uh... An annual vacation to Africa this time. Okay. I can go with that. I guess the whole flying south for the winter thing, if we're already on December 25th here, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's the same game. Just now there's snow. I love video games. I know, I, I know it's crazy. I can't believe Nintendo would allow this game on the same eShop they had Mario Clock and Calculator on. What are the odds of that? Did you know actually that the Clock app has an alarm clock on it that will blast Mario music even if the volume slider is completely muted? just in case you wanted to wake up to blaring chiptune. Probably the most disappointing proper Nintendo release in the eShop is Chibi Robo Photo Finder, and trust me, it brings me no pleasure to say this. In this adventure, Chibi Robo is working with a museum curator to collect a bunch of nostalgia junk, relics from the past. And since you can time travel, I guess, it's up to you to get the job done. What transpires then is a game all about throwing a bunch of shapes your way, and you gotta take pictures of items in the real world that fit in those outlines. And just pray to god the shoddy 3DS camera actually picks it up. If it was just that, this would be simply another pointless photo app right alongside photos with Mario. Remember this thing? Of course you don't. There are actual mini games though. Here's a shooting one. Guess how long this ruler is. And I mean, hey, it, uh, it... It's functional, but the time in between these minigames is just so long and damn tedious, and anytime you just run around, it makes me sad that this little robot never got the love that he deserved. Honestly, I'ma say it, Photo Finder is worse than Ziplash. It's not like either of them are good, but at least Ziplash is its own thing. Photo Finder shows the potential of this franchise on a handheld, it's in 3D for crying out loud, but it's just a 3DS gimmick showcase, and it doesn't even do a good job of that. And like I said, now I'm sad. I'm gonna go play some more uh, 3D Classics Urban Champion to cheer myself up. <sighs> I guess I guess this one really shouldn't count since Garfield Kart did get a retail release. It's not eShop exclusive, but I think I would be a little bit too embarrassed to allow this game into my house, so it's I'm going, I'm going digital with this one. Here we are. So it's a Mario Kart clone, obviously. Can it really be as bad as everyone says it? Yeah. Yes, yes it is. So for one, no multiplayer because why would you want that? This game is too good for more than one person to handle at a time. Look at how excited Garfield is. This ain't Monday in his world. Oh, it's it's like a fr it's like a Friday in this world. Look at that smile. That's me. That's me excited to play this game right now. I want to die. It's wow. It's truly remarkable how boring this game is. All of these tracks are just so barren and lifeless. Oh. Okay then. 
I'm not proud to admit that I played this game for more than a half hour, but hey, I needed a reason to reconsider my life choices anyway, so this this helped with that. The items are incredibly unbalanced too, like Mario Kart has this formula down, so much so that you don't really even think about it. If you're behind, you have a stronger chance of getting better items to help even the score. Yes, it does add random chance into the equation and it's not all skill based, but it is for the best, because again, even playing field. If the game is just you holding the acceleration until you get to the end, it, that's not, that's not better. And why is this Garfield anyway? Why, of all franchise, the fat lasagna cat? Oh wow, it's a funny orange cat that hates Mondays and loves lasagna? Put him in a car. And why did they make a second one? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, Garfield cart, really bad. What a, what a surprise. Something new, something new, please? Escape from Forest. Oh, oh man. They couldn't even get the current score and max score counters to sync up. I am so tired. So in this one, you're automatically running forward and it's up to you to avoid the things, but what things are safe and which aren't, I don't know. I feel like I'm just running into these trees all the time, but I'm totally okay. God, God next. Fat dragons. We out here body shaming dragons now? It's, uh, it, it's just balloon fight, but with dragons. Okay, is the idea that you're so fat that you crush your enemies from the sheer weight being thrust onto their shoulders? I guess, I guess that's the case. And I also guess that music was out of their budget. This song's my favorite. The Magic Hammer. Immediately, I'm already kind of impressed. I mean, the game has a functional user interface. <laughs> At this point, I'm stunned. Create your character. Yeah, that's me. Okay, speak to the village elder. Sure, I can do that. You know, right off the bat, it is quick to assume that this is some sort of Minecraft clone, but no. You ever play Dragon Quest Builders? It's more like that. A bit of an action adventure game that just so happens to take place in a blocky world. It's been 10 seconds, and I'm already lost. I, I just, I can't, I, I don't know, I don't know where this stupid elder is. All these villagers just want to trade items. No one's telling me anything. There's no magic hammer in sight, so for one, I am very thrown off. Which one of you stupid blocky idiots is the elder? Oh god, okay, you, finally, I got lost. This whole village is like two square feet and I got lost, but okay, hello. Oh god, okay, finally, with the magic hammer in tow. Okay, now what? I am sad to report that I am back to not having a single idea of what to do. Guess I'll, uh, guess I'll go brave the wilderness. Oh no, enemies, back off evil fiends and face my hammer. Huh, all right, that, was, that wasn't too bad. What is, what is Crimson MacGuffin? Oh God. Okay. You know, I suddenly have this major urge to play Minecraft. I just really want to play Minecraft on the Nintendo 3DS, but all I have is this crappy old 3DS. It doesn't run on here. As for the new 3DS, I don't want to play this stupid thing. I want to play this stupid thing. <sighs> if only there was some way we could meet in the middle here. Well, do I ever have the game for you? Am I finally going insane? Oh, this ain't your granddad's Cube Creator, it's Cube Creator 3D. Oh god, why? Of course, of course there's a Minecraft clone on this stupid console. It would be weirder if this didn't exist. You know, Minecraft did release on the 3DS, but it was that stupid, pesky new 3DS exclusive. There's only like four of these games and you would only know about them because they put their stupid spine on the wrong side of the stupid case. What are us poor, stupid, original 3DS users gonna use? Uh, this, clearly, it's not, God. I really, I, you know what? I really have no idea how they did this, but this is one of the worst feeling first person games of all time. And it's here in the palm of my hands. It's all just so loose and floaty and for the mining and or crafting, sure, whatever, you don't need to be precise, but combat? <laughs> they want me to do combat with this? Oh, ha, okay. The worlds are incredibly tiny. The interface is clunky as all hell. You only get the very bare basics of blocks to work with here. Like this is truly what happens when you ask your parents for Minecraft and they go, oh, we have Minecraft at home. This is Cube Creator 3D, Minecraft at home. Bit Dungeon Plus. This is the loudest title music of all time. The more times you play, the more ruins you will be able to unlock. Why, why, why is this the ugliest formatting of an 8-bit text of all time? You see, now this one is one of those randomly generated dungeon crawlers. You run into a room, you clear it out, you get the key, you move on until you die. 
There's just not really much more to it than that. Uh, there's like a bit of a choice regarding what stats get upgraded sometimes, but you're just mindlessly slashing at enemies and hoping for the best. I feel like, I feel like there's something here, but everything about this one just seems off. Something you could sink your teeth into, not for the deepest experience of the world, of course, but something for good bite-sized fun. There's something about this that I'm just not digging, and then it turns out that the game actually released on basically every other console, and it looks way better. Like, it runs smoother, the pixels are a lot cleaner, the interface doesn't look like the bare minimum to pass your college game programming class. Dare I say, this game is kind of worth checking out on literally anything else. This 3DS version is terrible, and you should feel bad for releasing it. I'm sorry, that's just how it is. And now, everybody, time for the 3DS main event. It's time for Kutar. Holy shit. They got Kutar in this? After an extensive 20 second research session, to come to find out that Kutar uh, exists in Japan. And that's, uh, that's all the information I got. I can't tell if he's popular or not, but with 10 whole games on the 3DS eShop, oh man, he was, uh, he was certainly trying to be. Kutar Tube Rider. Okay. Kutar Magic Ball. Uh, Kutar Powder Factory. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, this one is kinda like a game. What the f*** is Kutar? Man, all ten of these games are, like, exactly the same. It, it's one Mario Party minigame stretched incredibly thin, you will eventually fail, and then Kutar goes... And that's it! What, what the hell is this? Kutar Quiz, at the very least, I had some high hopes for, like, okay, cool, a race to answer trivia. Got it, I can work with this, but it, it's not... It's not that. This guy asks you the same few questions in rotation over and over again, with the answer always being the same. Bank, Fuji, left, left, bank, Fuji, bank. Sometimes they hit you with the headphones, and then... I don't understand! Okay, what, what, what were reviewers saying about this? In their very critical review, Pure Nintendo has stated that the Kutar series consists of 10 games, all of which have excellent music and gr What do you mean, Kirok? I say we take Kutar and throw him into an open volcano. The 3DS is an incredible console, one of the best libraries of all time, and if you throw the original DS on top of that, like, it's unparalleled. It is a fantastic system with a bunch of classics from top to bottom. Which is all the more upsetting that they allowed so much crap onto this eShop because oh my god. The Wii U though, on the other hand, <laughs> on this thing? Oh man. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh boy, you guys have no idea. Oh, 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 oh god, I want to die. One of the benefits of the 3DS's eShop is that naturally, because of the portable nature of the console as well as the two-screen setup, a bulk of those games are genuinely exclusive and are now lost to the ether. Most of those experiences you cannot get anywhere else. On the flip side, luckily on the Wii U, a lot of those heavy hitters are on other consoles. Sure, some of the features may be different, but for a bulk of those games, you can play them on anything else, and that's good. Realistically, the biggest losses here boil down to like affordable space adventures, Pushmo World, and Dr. Luigi. Dear God, I will never forget about Dr. Luigi and all he did for the medical world. And for a game like Meme Run, being able to slip through the cracks like that? God. The thing is though, it's not even like this game was only recently lost, it's been delisted since 2015 due to unlicensed use of the troll face, which A, is very appropriate given what this game is trying to be, and B, a funny way to learn that the troll face actually has a copyright attached to it. Great times all around, truly one of the games of all time. And yes, I know there's a sequel, and no, I'm not gonna play it. Another pretty iconic one during this era was The Letter, aka Shut Up Jimmy, we have Slender Man at home. And yep, it's bad all right. That one out of 10 review on Nintendo Life, they knew exactly what they were talking about. With how infamous this game was, I did expect it to be a little more offensive, but it's more so just indicative that Nintendo really had no checks and balances to what made it onto their shop during this time. You run around a dark area with a crummy flashlight, everything has a bad blurry PS1 texture on it. The story is nonsensical, I'm not even convinced that there is one even though there's words here. But hey, to the game's credit, there are letters, so Points for at least not lying to us with the marketing. There is in fact a letter in this game, multiple even. But while the letter was the most notorious game on this eShop, it's just such a terrible FPS from top to bottom, you're not wrong, but it's not the worst one. And I'm tired of pretending like it is. 
Suspension Railroad Simulator. In this game, you're in charge of a suspension train station, and as the person in command, you can get into the cockpit of the vehicle and get it to go? I, I, th I think, maybe? I'll be honest, I, I have pressed every single button available to me, I have touched every single pixel of the gamepad touchscreen, and I, I, uh, I can't get this thing to move to save my life. I can wander around outside the storage room, you know, I, I can walk into the car, and I can even swoop the camera outside. And you get me riled up, I can even go, Ugh. But I cannot at all get this thing to actually move, which I, I would assume there's a game behind this, but I, I can't get to it. There's something about like needing to make sure people get into the car, but no matter what I do, I just can't, I just can't do it. And when I look outside, I see the same three people over and over again. I, I think I'm just going insane, so I'm just gonna move on. Next up, we got Joe's Diner. Ooh, it's a, it's kind of a spooky game. Get, get ready, you're not prepared for the frights that are ahead. In the middle of nowhere, there's a diner that was built on top of a cemetery. There's some, there's there's some more stuff to it, but quite frankly, it's it's a lot of exposition. Like it is a, it is a it is a lot of text and then a shockingly long loading screen. And I can't I can't be bothered. I'm gonna be totally real with you. But hey, look at that. We're in the diner now. Essentially, the goal of the game is to clean up the diner before too long, as well as not making too much noise to disturb the old chieftain. That's it. And your eyes do not deceive you. This game does indeed run at frames per second. And oh man, those those spooky old ghosts, let me tell you, they're up to no good. Out of nowhere, phones are gonna go off, the coffee maker's gonna go off, the TV's gonna turn on, it's haunted, and I'm about to pee my pants, I'm so damn scared. But, but like, but like, you, you can only hold one thing at a time, and it didn't do a good job telling me where to put the thing, so I'm, I'm just walking around an abandoned diner holding a plate of food that was eaten 20 hours ago, and I just, I don't know, I don't know what's happening, there's noises all over the place, I'm not scared, I'm just annoyed. But oh, 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 oh if you don't clean the diner before the end of your shift, you, uh, die? I think? Uh... Oh, uh, okay, now hold on, hold on. This one has some potential now. Chasing Dead. Oh, this looks like an actual game. It's not original, it's like it's like Walking Dead, but now now they're chasing you. Ooh. You guys alright back there? Do, do you need an ibuprofen? Today marks 10 days since we've had any contact with the expedition team sent to the other Earth. Oh no! Other Earth. That, that was the best you can come up with? The adventure begins in a plane in mid-crash, and, uh, yep, we got zombies. It's a good thing we got this flashlight, too. I can barely tell what's going on. Maybe, maybe it's just me here, but I kind of feel like shooting a gun inside of a plane that's currently careening at max speed into the ground is probably not going to help matters. I, that's, that's just me. I've never been in this situation, so I wouldn't know, but that, that seems like a safe thought. That being said, though, I've never been to other Earth, so maybe the rules don't apply there. I don't know. Oh, hey, and I'm dead. Good. These controls are just so damn sluggish. It's a basic twin stick thing. You would think that they would know what they're doing, but it just feels so bad. The buttons all do exactly what you expect them to, but the sluggish analog stick movement and the choppy frame rate, it's nearly impossible to achieve anything here. But eventually, through enough persistence, I got far enough for a new health bar to show up. Uh, what's, what's this all about? Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, 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 oh my God. Invisible zombie. What? All right, come here, you invisible bastard. Oh, wait, oh, wait, now he's here, and he has a gun? <laughs> okay. Dude, what? I, every every time he becomes visible after enough bullets, like, he just kills you in five seconds, and you have no time to dodge anything. This sucks. But you know what? I, I saw, I, I don't know why, but I did see something. There had to be something at the end of this terrible journey, something in level two that was gonna be enticing. I had to push forward, and sure enough, it took like a half hour, but I did it. Level two, now this one here. Uh, you know, outside of the the no skybox thing, I got some hope. First things first, an immediate leap of faith. And uh, there's a there's a zombie helicopter. This can't be good. Yep, I uh, I don't I don't think this follows protocol. <sighs> okay. Out of all the games I played here, quite honestly, Chasing Dead is the worst of the lot, but I gotta give a special shout out to the first skunk bundle, which includes multiple pieces of garbage. This is very ambitious. The kicker is, it's also of multiple genres. That's crazy. You got a, you got another first person horror game with incredible audio overload and a guy that's just standing there minding his own business. I think he's supposed to be the bad guy, but I, 
Um, and uh, oh, oh, hello there. Oh, actual feces. Excellent. So yeah, it, it's no surprise to anyone, but this is bad too. I, I have zero idea what to do in this one. But once again, we got multiple games here. This same bundle also includes basic ass snake, a platformer with the world record in slowest jump speed of all time, a garbage bomb explosion mobile game that looks like it's trying to be Angry Birds, but uh, I totally missed the memo. And uh, okay. But well, listen here, okay? The thing that ties everything together, like, truly, like, you you would think, okay, bad games, whatever, that there's no redeeming this one, but you're wrong. On your bingo card, if you had the main menu theme being a piano rendition of Good Riddance by Green Day, then, oh man. Oh man. Oh, I'm having the time of my life, all right. I, I assure you that this has been... This, this has been one of the times of all time. Also, relax. The first skunk bundle? There is no second skunk bundle here. You got way too ahead of yourself now. You were thinking, oh, I can be like Pokemon, the first movie. I know there's gonna be a sequel. Nah, you're more like Doug's first movie. You're the Doug's first movie of video games. Congratulations. Like the other games in that bundle, though, it should really be no surprise that other tiny shovelware games were slipping through the cracks at all times. Here's Daikon Set, a trio of games that are functional, and they they have graphics. That's all I can give it. Emoji Kara, they kind of give you two words, and you gotta find the two emoji that are those two words. This cost money. Ava and Avior save the Earth. Let's recycle and save the Earth. Okay, let's do that. Hey kids, you ever wanted to learn the difference between compost and recycling with two creepy flying children staring at you the whole time to make sure you don't screw up? No? Well clearly you hate the environment, this is the only way. And dude, like, they, they start to throw in hazardous materials to sift through on a moving train as well. This is, <laughs> this is getting a little bit too much for a kid here. Uh, take this toxic ooze, don't put it in the recycling, that's a big no-no. I can't handle this, let me look at all the pets I unlocked instead. The environment was a mistake. Interesting little fun fact, uh, there's no game of Tetris on the Wii U. That's kind of weird. There was Puyo Puyo Tetris on the Wii U only in Japan, so not localized, but if you want your Tetris fix, don't worry, got you covered. Here's, uh, Heptrix. It's Tetris, but bad. There was Percy's Predicament, which is just a mediocre high school project adaptation of Monkey Ball, but you know what? Credit where it's due. Uh, the name Percy's Predicament is incredibly hilarious. So, look at this guy. For being in a predicament, He's pretty fucking happy about it. Love me stupid buddies, stupid wonderland. This looks like a this looks like a flash game from the early 2000s. What do you oh, what do you mean? You see, you may be thinking to yourself now, oh, it's a preschool game for little children. That's totally fine, right? No, absolutely not. You just keep touching the animal it wants you to ad nauseum. That's it! That's that's the whole thing! What what do you what do you expect a kid to get out of this? Alright, that animal was a bust. Uh, what about the next one? Oh wow, crazy! It's the same thing! I got... I got a good feeling about the Dracula bat here, alright? Now, c come on, Dracula bat, don't let me down. Ooh, it's a matching game now. Oh, the brain juices are starting to flow now! Also found this one where you have to, like, move the iceberg for the animal to just get to the other side, and... It... it controls... terribly, because it's, it's based on tilting the Wii Remote, and God, I'm just... I'm so tired. Oh, dude, 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 the stone cutter. Holy sh! Wow. The stone cutter. I, I don't know how, I, I don't know how this released. It's a series of text boxes with lifeless narration, and that's it. And you think, oh, it's a visual novel, then sure, we can at least get some good artwork out of this. No, it, it's a series of PNGs with the occasional piece of clip art over it. I, I, I'm stunned. It's, it's a story about like a guy who wants to cut stones or something. I, I don't know. He goes out, he finds a rock and then proceeds to cut it. I think, you know, even with picking some of the options that led to the wrong endings, this game took five minutes to get through. I, oh, you thought I was gonna say hours. No, 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 five minutes. Listen, man, like I said earlier, game development is tough. I understand, I sympathize with anyone trying to live their dream and get a video game out there for the masses to play. But this, if you sent this to Nintendo servers and they accepted it, oh man, it is proof that life is cruel and we would all be better off going to tend the fields until we die. Obviously, when you're looking at the good games on the Nintendo 3DS and Wii U, you're gonna have a grand old time. But, 
on both of these consoles, it really calls into question whether or not the games like the ones mentioned today even deserve to be preserved despite the eShops being closed and... You know what? Yeah, you know what, I believe they do. Yes, of course, you are likely more willing to pop on a classic like Pocket Card Jockey or experiment with something new like Rusty's Real Deal Baseball before opting to pop on... F***ing Garfield Kart again! But, like many other things in life, it is hard to appreciate the good in games without playing some bad ones too. And for that, these games do fulfill a purpose. Even if they're absolute trash and should not have existed. And you know what, since all of these games have been preserved in some way, shape, or form, it'll always be interesting to go back and see what a company with the pedigree of Nintendo did allow for sale on their consoles, and how differently a wide range of people wanted to go about beginning or continuing their game development journey. Besides, it's not, it's not like the Nintendo Switch is much better. Believe it or not, most if not every video game console that ever existed has more bad games than good games. That's just the reality of it. So for the sake of game preservation and accessibility, it is important that those games are there and you have a way to access them if you so choose. I'm not saying you should choose to play the letter in the current year, because you definitely have unresolved problems if you do, uh, but it's important that they're there. And besides, like, if these games weren't readily accessible, I wouldn't be able to make this YouTube video, so... Uh, there's one, there's one positive, you know, aspect of this. Depending on who you ask. The Wii U also got Now I Know My ABCs, also by Skunk Software, and all it is is the alphabet song, and then you draw out the letters. That's it. Look at this dog. This dog is deceased. Thank God for video game preservation. <laughs>